Hey, this is Joe Van Cleve, and welcome to another episode of the Typewriter Video Series. I've been tinkering. Well, I love to tinker and work on ideas, and last night I was um, thinking about how great it would be to sit in bed with a little portable typewriter like this Brother Charger 11 and sit there and type. That is one of my favorite things, to be in the really comfortable position and type on your lap. But I was thinking, you know, I kind of get tired of having to uh, change the paper every time you get to the end of the sheet, especially if I want to really do some stream of consciousness writing. And I know I'm going to be going for more than one page. And I got to thinking, you know, I've been doing this roll of paper thing that you've seen me on previous videos using the roll of teletype paper. And I was thinking, well, maybe I can uh, figure out how to... Uh, I can make a little lap desk, like a little board that sits on my lap, and I can rig up a little roll of paper on a bracket behind uh, behind the, the, the back side of the board, and then I can set the typewriter on my lap and thread the, the paper up through the typewriter. And then I said, well, that actually wouldn't work because, you know, when I do the endless roll of paper typing, uh, I, I have it on a tray table, and I have the roll down below the table at the legs and you have to have enough room between the roll of paper and the typewriter because the carriage of the typewriter is going back and forth as you're typing but the roll of paper is fixed and you need enough room between the two for the paper to kind of do that movement without it binding and tearing or getting pulled out of the carriage uh, so it wouldn't really work to have it right behind the typewriter on a board and that's when I come up uh, with the conclusion that I'm going to have to figure out how to attach a roll of paper to the carriage of the typewriter. Now, one of the first things I thought about was any kind of extra weight that you hang off of the carriage of a typewriter is going to add to, of course, the weight of the carriage. And so the way the carriage moves is when you do a carriage return, like, for instance, uh, this, you're actually winding up the spring motor inside the machine and the spring motor stores your mechanical energy and every time you hit the space bar or a typed letter uh, the escape mechanism is going to allow the spring motor to release the carriage and move one space over and so the the amount of force uh, uh, that the machine is designed to have with the spring motor is based on the weight of the carriage so when you put a roll of paper on the back of a carriage, a uh, typewriter carriage, you have to be really cognizant about how much weight that is. You don't want to use one of these, I forget how long this is, 500 foot roll of paper. First of all, you don't really need 500 feet of paper at any one time. And that's just way too heavy. And also because the uh, diameter of the, paper, of the roll is bigger, you would have to cantilever the roll off the back of the carriage even further. Uh, so. Uh, this came to my um, mind when I was thinking about it last night that, um, first of all, you have to mount the roll of paper on the carriage. Secondly, it has to be a, ideally like a universal fit design for almost any typewriter. I'm not really sure if it is. And thirdly, it has to be installed with minimal or no tools required. So that was kind of a pretty... Uh, lofty set of goals there that I just wrote down. But fortunately, if you guys have seen uh, one of my past, more recent uh, typewriter video series videos, you know about this roll of paper here. This is a poster banner paper that you get at arts and craft stores. And it originally comes here in the United States in 17 inch wide rolls. And I cut the roll in half with a miter saw, a power miter saw using a nice real thin blade. And it gives me an eight and a half inch wide roll of paper. It's 50 feet long. And this is the other half that I haven't used yet. And that's why the original label is still here, just to show you what the size is. It's 50 feet long. Now, a standard sheet of paper in the United States, letter paper, is eight and a half by 11. So it's roughly 50 pages of paper you have. 50 pages of paper in this roll. So that is plenty of pages for your Jack Kerouac style uh, on the road style, uh, non-stop typing experience. So some of you uh, may be aware there's this maker movement going on and people have rediscovered the art of tinkering, but they've just repackaged it as more of a 
uh, more organized kind of a pastime. And of course, with the technology of 3D printing and all that, it's uh, there's a lot of revolutionary changes that have happened with uh, tinkering. But I'm an old-fashioned tinkerer, and one of the keys to being an old-fashioned tinkerer is having a container of miscellaneous hardware. So the first principle is never throw anything away. Any kind of a spare hardware fastener that you might get, if you buy something from Ikea or one of those stores where you have to assemble the furniture, if you have a couple spare screws or fasteners, don't throw them away, put them in a container. This is actually an old, uh, some kind of a brand of oatmeal. And what I like about the container is the lid is wide enough that you can actually get your hand in it. And uh, what I usually do for these containers is I have a uh, heavy piece of spare, uh, material like heavy fabric and I just dump the container out on the workbench sift through it and then I pick up the whole thing and I pour it back into the container like a funnel when I'm done but the secret here is I have I have a container of screws small screws large screws nuts and washers electrical stuff plumbing stuff but I have this one that's miscellaneous hardware and what is miscellaneous hardware it's literally anything that doesn't go into any other category. Brackets, hardware, stuff that you might, you know, I mean, hose, well, actually, this is a bicycle handlebar accessory, something like this. I mean, there's just a wide variety of stuff in here. And sometimes I'll even have a smaller container like a vitamin pill capsule with other stuff in it. So that's just kind of the way I organize my junk but one of the things that I do when I have a project like this is I don't know how I'm going to connect or suspend this roll of paper off the back of my typewriter is I started looking through this jar <coughs> and I found after several different items that may have worked properly I found now these aren't actually the right size the ones I used are bigger as I'll show you here in a second but these are picture hanging uh, hooks right so you put a brad a nail through here it goes against a wall and you it, the brad or nail goes at an angle into the drywall and you have a hook that you can hang a picture frame on and uh, so I started noticing that I could turn it upside down and I could hang it off the back edge of the typewriter what I have is this picture hanging hook and this is the kind where the bracket has a hook and then it makes a 90 degree twist and then there's this little rounded section that the brad or nail goes through and what i did is i got the lo the longest nails that i could find that would fit into that hole are these inch and a half uh nails with the almost no head you know there's not a big flat head on it they're like brads and so i put the nail down point first into the hole of this picture hanging bracket and of course the nail is not going to stay in there real securely so what you have to do is you have to take a propane torch and some solder and what you really need is solder flux liquid solder flux that you put in the on the joint where the two pieces of metal are going to make contact and then heat it up with your torch and apply some solder and you can get that nail to stick to the bracket and the reason why you're doing that is because what I've done up here is I've bent the nail at a 90 degree angle so the bracket hangs off the back of this panel of the typewriter there's a little bit of a gap in here on the top edge between the top edge and the um, mechanism for the margin settings so what I did is I took a pair of pliers and I bent this hook so it's almost a 180 and then cinched it up a little bit so it's a little bit snug on this rail and the reason why you need it to be snug is otherwise this bracket under the weight of the paper roll will kind of go flop like that so it it makes it so it stays vertical and then this nail makes a 90 degree bend and what I have is a piece of uh, 3 16 inch brass tubing that fits over the end of the nail goes to the other side the same way and that is what the roll of paper rolls on so this is a close-up of the bracket itself hanging off the back panel of the carriage and of course the picture hanging bracket is upside down I have the pointed end of the nail sticking in the reverse side of the hole 
in the picture hanging bracket. I've soldered it so it's secure. There is a 90 degree bend in the nail which goes into the core of the paper where the brass tube is that extends over to the other side. And there's a clearance down here so the bottom of the bracket doesn't rub against the bottom of the machine. And then I have folded over the hook end of the picture hanging bracket so it's more snug onto the top edge of this plate so that the uh, bracket doesn't slide back and forth so easy or doesn't flop back and forth. Now another nice thing about this design is the weight of the paper roll is pushing down on the nail which is in turn trying to push the bracket inwards toward the machine but the whole front edge of the bracket is pushing against the plate and that's what secures it and keeps the paper roll from drooping any further. And so it's all based on the strength of the nail, how stiff it is, the strength of the joint here, and the fact that the hook is strong enough not to bend. Uh, what Another thing I like about the design is that the bottom of the paper roll, now this is a full roll, is well above the bottom of the machine, so it's not going to drag on whatever surface you have it sitting on. And as you might be able to tell, it's, it's sort of touching the back of the typewriter, but it appears to like it's going to work. Now, I have not actually typed on it, so I'm going to actually do this for the first time. And so what I have to do is, first of all, I have to move this over. I had this roll of paper secured with the tape. This is the blue tape that I used when I actually cut the roll. Okay, stick that there. Now, there we go. Here's your UPC code. And there's a little bit of adhesive. And of course, what really helps is just to take a little Ulfa touch knife and split the paper. So the way I've installed this is the roll of paper is going to roll over the platen. And then when I feed it into the platen, there we go. Oh, very cool. And I have a little bit of a score, like the paper is a little bit scored from my knife. But let's see how this, maybe this works. Let's see. Quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, and if I do, let's see, the camera is not focusing, but you can see that it's, looky there. Looks like it's rolling just fine. Look at that. Doing carriage returns. The paper rolls itself just fine. Of course, it does have a little bit of a curl, but one of the solutions to that is to hang a bulldog clip off the back of the paper to weight it down, and it'll fall right over the back of the typewriter like that. So there you go. Look at that. And uh, it looks like this thing works. So. This uh, might be an interesting idea for you guys to try. Okay, so I was going to show you basically how to take off this roll of paper, and you can see more clearly the mechanism, uh, how it works. So um, I'm going to slide this bracket outboard a little bit. And as I said, I had pinched the hook so it was a little bit more snug along the top rail. And I'm going to do the same on this one. I'm going to slide it outboard. And then I'm going to just slip off the brass tube, and the brass tube comes right out of the center core of the paper. So this is a picture hanging bracket. Normally it sits upside down like this, and this would be the drywall side here, and the nail would go this way, and the hook would be a little bit more open for your picture hanging wire. But I've bent this more closed so it fits more snugly over the rail, the back rail of the typewriter. And then the inch and a half nail goes in it from the back side. And then I've bent this 90 degree bend in it so that the brass tube can fit over it like that. And of course the other side fits the same way. Now you want a brass tube that fits over the nail fairly snugly so there's less play. This was the smallest piece I had that was uh, long enough, but I would probably ideally want to go down to about an eighth of an inch. It would be better. This is more like three sixteenths. But uh, anyways, it fits over like that, and of course it hangs off the back of the typewriter like that, the back rail, and like that. 
and positions the core of paper far enough away from the back surface to account for the radius of the paper core. Okay, so one of the things I'd like to do with this is to ensure that I don't scratch the paint on the back rail up here. And so what I'm going to do is to remove one of these pieces and just um, maybe put a little bit of tape on it or something like that. Make it look neater here, but this is just an initial idea. And so it can hang there, so you have to push that down so it's secure. And it'll hang there and the metal won't scratch the paint. And it still has sufficient clearance on the bottom of the bracket not to touch this piece, right? Oh, so if there's any improvements to be made in this, I would say it is in the area of the the, the piece of the nail that I'm using, which is like a stiff wire that doesn't bend very easy, it really needs, uh, after the bend, it needs to be longer uh, because it's really barely long to hold the brass tube. And if, you, if this uh, picture hanging bracket slides out a little bit too far, this uh, brass tube falls off the nail. So I really need to just find a, a, a longer piece of stiff wire not wire, but actually like a metal rod that once you bend it, it'll stay put under the weight of the of the roll of paper. Uh, and then secondarily, it would be nice to have a bracket other than a picture hanging bracket that you could, maybe with a little thumb screw, you could tighten it down so it doesn't slide. Because right now it's just depending upon the fact that I pinched it. The hook is slightly pinched, but it wants to slip a little bit, depending on the force of how much force is on there with the weight of the, of the paper roll. Well, it's a couple hours later. I was going to post the video the way it was, and then I decided, you know what? I think I can do better than you just making these makeshift little brackets. I mean, that was a prototype, right? Rev zero. Okay, so what do we have here? I guess I'll do it on this side, it'll be easier to install. So I still have the adhesive tape. Uh, making a mess here. Okay, so what we have, start on this side. So what we have is these little brass fixtures. So it's made from half inch brass L channel. And then there is a smaller, maybe three eighths, rectangular hollow channel pieces that I've soldered together so and then you have uh, the larger brass tube and there's a hole drilled on the inside of this extension that takes this tube in like that and then there is a smaller tube that fits snugly inside the bigger one that goes on a smaller hole from the outside like that to secure it in place so let's see how that works so I'm going to hang both of these brackets, and I, I designed these so they fit right at the very edge of this back plate, like that. So, as you can see, like that, maybe. And then, uh, my paper roll, I guess I have to take my rubber band off. And there, like that. So, what I have to do is put the paper roll on the brass tube and then get the brass tube somehow fitted like that and then you simply secure it simply you simply secure it with the little brass extension pieces that act as they act as like a square little knob that you can grab a hold of, but they also stick inside. So there you go. And uh, yeah, they look kind of like they might work, huh? Little things there and there. And then we will have to just thread up the old paper in the platen again. Get it straightened out. Get it evened up with where the roll is. 
And uh, hey, there it is. That's my new little design of integrated or integral paper roll for on-the-go Kerouac typing. Well, so I got the new brackets on here and let's uh, give her a shot. Hey, it looks like it works fine. Uh, so there's probably uh, one or two things I might want to do on this design still. I might want to put some kind of a little thumb screw on the back of uh, the rectangular bracket to enable me to tighten up the brackets against the back rail of the typewriter because you can still, if you're not careful, you can just pull it up. It'll come up and off. And if you jar the typewriter heavily, it might pop off the whole bracket. So it needs to, some little screw, a thumb screw. And because that little rectangular channel is hollow, I can put a square nut inside there to hold a screw through. But it's a nice little solution, I think. And now, of course, the design of this particular bracket system for holding the roll of paper is particular and custom to this model of Brother Typewriter. Brothers, Brother Charger 11s, like the Webster XL 747, I think many of those are the similar kind of style back here. If you have a, a typewriter that has uh, the flip-up paper fingers, support fingers, or some kind of uh, margin adjustments that are in the back, this design, it, just the way it is, won't work for you. You'll have to uh, come up with an alternate solution. But for me, I think this is a really handy solution for these little portable typewriters for traveling with them and typing when you don't want to carry, you know, a pack of paper and have to stop every page to change it out. This is a stream of consciousness, non-stop portable typing, courtesy of the integrated paper roll system. Well, this is Joe Van Cleve, and I hope this gives you some good ideas for a project like this of your own on your typewriters. And until next time, stay creative, have fun, and you guys have yourselves a great day.